My name is Richard Troll. Uh, I'm a research professor at the Economic and Social Research Institute in Dublin and uh, the professor of economics uh, of climate change at the Free University in Amsterdam. The topic of my assessment paper uh, is carbon dioxide emission reduction. We looked at uh, five different scenarios. In the first two, we spent all the money available to the Copenhagen Consensus for Climate 2009 in the first decade. In the last three scenarios, we spread the money over the century. In the first two scenarios, we spent all the money available to the Copenhagen Consensus, uh, that is two and a half trillion uh, dollars, in the first decade, between 2010 and 2020. This is a very silly thing to do. Um, the reason is uh, that climate change is a long-term problem. A single decade of emission reduction actually uh, has very little impact uh, on climate change. So you have large, benef uh, large costs, uh, but very small benefits. Uh, as a matter of fact, in these two scenarios, the benefit cost ratio is one in a hundred or less. In the last three scenarios, we continue to spend money over the entire century uh, on carbon di dioxide emission reduction. Um, this makes uh, a much larger impact on emissions and hence uh, on climate change. Uh, in one scenario, we actually spend the same amount of money as in the first two. That is, we spend every decade roughly two and a half trillion uh, dollars. This brings uh, with it uh, an enormous cost, as you can imagine, uh, but we also make a very significant dent uh, in climate change, that is, we avoid most of the negative impacts uh, of climate change. Still, because of these benefits are so far in the future, the benefits actually do not outweigh the costs, and the benefit cost ratio is only uh, one in two. Uh, in the final two scenarios, we slightly bent uh, the rules of the Copenhagen Consensus and rather than spending the money on emission abatement, we put the money in a trust fund that accumulates interests and then uh, finances emission reduction over the rest of the century. This is a much more sensible thing to do. If we spend all of the money, uh, we find uh, a carbon tax of roughly $12 per ton of carbon in 2010, rising with the rate of discount, uh, and for this policy, uh, we see costs that are reasonable and benefits uh, that are substantial for a benefit cost ratio of about one in two. If we spend only 5% of the money available uh, to the Copenhagen consensus on carbon dioxide emission reduction, uh, we find that we can afford a carbon tax of $2 per ton of carbon, again rising with a discount rate, um, and we find the benefit cost ratio of one and a half. That is, this particular policy uh, passes the benefit cost test on the most conservative of assumptions. That is, a high discount rate, uh, ignoring uncertainty and ignoring equity.